so I'm not giving really any in-depth information. I'm just trying to promote an idea that it could be easy to start GPU programming. And uh, the create GPU environment is essentially an easy way to start uh, uh, the GPU programming. The other thing which uh, Dominic didn't mention is internally at CSCS, we are also setting up some experimental cluster. And if you are working and if you are really concerned about portability, you can compare contrast your XKC results on a commodity type of clusters. So can you just quickly raise your hand if you think you are interested in any way in GPU programming for whatever you do? OK, that's a relief. And uh, have you done anything? about it, like CUDA, OpenCL, PGI. OK. So I think more or less it looks like about half the people are interested, and about four or five have done anything. So I'm trying to convince you that, OK, half who are interested, they can get on the system and get started fairly quickly, and even half who are not absolutely at all interested, you might give it a thought after this talk, and you may not. So <clears throat> what we are doing at CSCS to promote, to not just buying the system, but uh, assisting you in every possible way to get it started, even if you have very limited resources in terms of human resources, to get it started on these new system. So I call it incremental approach to D GPU programming, and I'll talk about this Cray programming environment, but really give you high-level information uh, in uh, other slides. And there are some numerical libraries in that programming environment which might help you if your code uses them. So it's, you can slowly and gradually, without much of an effort, can at least get it started. You can say, my code runs on GPU, and how fast it runs is, we talk about it later. The other thing is, if you already have CUDA or OpenCL code, you might think, oh, I put so much effort. Is it going to be any benefit, this new Cray XK6 machine or the commodity type of GPU clusters we are putting? Um, the answer is yes. You can, of course, run your CUDA and OpenCL code on these, plat these platforms. And uh, there are additional tools available that could help you maybe uh, optimize your code more than you have optimized on whichever target platform you are using. If you are use, is, is scaling things on Iger, you may have on Cray systems tools available that could provide you much uh, low level information in, 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 within an MPI environment. And the final thing is it's very important for us because uh, as we know, there are many applications who are not, or many communities who are not going to just write for XK6. The idea is to have not only code portable across like a wide range of platforms, but also you have some kind of performance portability. So w whatever effort we are undertaking and working with Cray and like I said, uh, a more commodity cluster environment, we would like to work with you, and especially if you are trying, trying to optimize code on XK6, that you will have similar level of performance available on other system. Cray programming environment is currently uh, proprietary, but the idea is it is going to grow into an open MP type of standard, and I'll show you uh, some code snippets where I sh I'll show you some code with Cray programming environment and some with PGI programming environment. So you can, uh, with little modification, you can take code uh, you, you developed on Cray XK system. Uh, to a commodity cluster where you have PGI compiler available. And of course, if you have CUDA or OpenCL, that should not be a problem. <clears throat> so the commodity interconnect configuration is pretty much what you can find in your institutional clusters or any other GPU clusters you have access to. So <clears throat> here is my more or less sales pitch type of thing. So this is the code. Uh, we sort of worked on it a little bit. In fact, uh, one of my colleagues, Jeff Poznanovic, he took a PGI version and he converted into, um, it's a CFD code, converted into crepe programming environment. So you can see it's nothing unusual looking, especially if you're used to looking at Fortran. And 
Now it's GPU in the Cray environment. All you have to do is type this, and it will run on GPU. And uh, of course, you would like to run most, more and more of your code on GPU. So if you have a section of code and you have accelerated it, and your data is already on the GPU, you may want to accelerate uh, other regions of the code. And what it does, these accelerators would do is they will do all the additional work you would expect a CUDA code would do, initiate the device, transfer data, and all the other things. So you can get it started easily. But I don't want to deceive you. So <laughs> it's a lot of work after that. So what we did is with a simple migration, we get very poor performance. And uh, one thing you have to bear in mind that the Cray GPU environment is still in uh, what we call a pre-beta release version. So the tools are improving, the performance is improving, and we are learning more and more together with Cray how we can provide useful information back to the user or code developer so they can program and code uh, very quickly. So these are just the three stages we said. The f our first performance numbers were really poor. So if you look at the 744 <laughs> megaflops, just as a reference, on a, on a Westmere Intel, you get about Mm, 4,000 megaflops. So your starting point is really bad. But I think you can slowly and gradually improve it. And uh, we have shown this code to be improved up to 8,000 megaflops. And internally at Cray and uh, at NVIDIA, they showed the performance of up to, I think, 50 gigaflops. So we are getting there. So you can get it started, but there are some stages because of the architectural realities of GPU. You have to bear them in mind. But there will be tools to help you out. And if you say, OK, I wrote my code with Cray GPU environment. How can I take it to any other platform? I mean, I'm just stuck to Cray. That's not going to be true. You have to make some effort, though, but it's not going to be a whole lot. So now, the same code with PGI directives. Again, you do more or less similar. The the wording of loops change a little bit. And so because conceptually, you are doing the same thing with data structure, with the control structure, and with orchestrating your memory uh, on the host and on the CPU. So there are some references in there. And if you can Google it quickly, the Himeno Benchmark web page, PGI web page, you can find a whole lot of resources there. This part is going to run on GPU. One GPU. Yeah. Yeah, right now the the, the programming model that is being proposed is flawed in the way that it assumes one GPU per node. But like I said, it's a start. And there are, there are uh, especially the great proposal out there allows you to express that you can use multiple devices, but it's not being implemented. So the great proposal for OpenMP is very much work in progress. Not all the, uh, not, not all the directives are there. So So in summary, We would like to encourage you, once we have these systems up and running, to give it a try, yourself or your student, postdocs, or whatever, because it's not a whole lot of effort to just get started and see what you get out of it by little experiments. And like I said, we will have two types of systems. So whatever you experiment, you can't say it's just very specific to the Cray system. It could be applicable easily to other systems. And especially, like I said, I didn't talk about the numerical libraries. You all like LibSci on Cray system. So if your code relies on LibSci, there is a LibSci accelerator version. So, and not all the calls are there. Again, that is work in progress. But you can experiment with that. And, uh, and when, when we do the course, we will talk more about, in the course, the directive part. But more, most importantly, the tools that go uh, with this programming environment. because. For, for us, XK6 is not just hardware. It's the complete package, the programming environment and the tools. 
and we would like this to work for you. Like I said, it's more or less a sales pitch because we are setting this system and we want these to be used and experimented. Uh, so, like I said, when the system is up and running, I would encourage all of you to get on, try it, tell us how good, bad, ugly it is, and how this can be improved, because this is not just a feedback for us, it's a feedback for Cray, and they are working very closely with us, and we are the first site to install this system. And if you want to access the GPU cluster, you can always write to us, and if you have any other comment and feedback about system sizes, system configuration, memory, or anything else, we would also like to hear from you. And since these slides are going to go up on the website, so I just put some references there. So you can find system details as they become available. And the proposal for OpenMP for Accelerator has been presented. You can, of course, search it, and you can easily find it. Um, there is the, uh, if you are really interested specifically in the Cray environment, the Cray directives, I think this is a very good slide presented by Alistair Hart, who is also working very closely with us, and you will find additional directive. So beyond just doing parallel what you can do for, uh, uh, for describing data, moving data to different parts of GPU memory, and of course, PGI compiler accelerators. They also have lots of paper, slides, uh, and other resources. So again, this is work, is pro work in progress. It's not done. So <laughs> you can't, I don't want to give you an impression that the work you will do now is going to be, it's going, you don't, you don't have to make changes over time, but because maybe some of the directives might change, but the idea is once you know how to learn to program and optimize and tune for these devices, I think that experience and that knowledge would go beyond this generation of systems. So I think that's probably the take home message for me here.